this video is a demo video for a class exercise under DCF model. Now, in the previous exercises, we are kind of assuming that all the future cash flow here for free cash flows, these will occur at the end of the year. Well, the company is operating throughout the year, so cash flow is probably going to generate it throughout the whole year. So the assumption is a kind of real, so the assumption is kind of unrealistic in this sense, then how to make it more realistic, how to incorporate it in the model? Is it possible to incorporate it? If the uh, company is operating throughout the years, then a more realistic assumption is that um, our free cash flow is generated in the middle of the year because um, that is basically the midpoint. And ca if cash flow is smoothly distributed from, from the first day of the year to the last day of the year, relatively speaking, then this assumption will be better. So here, what we are gonna do is to apply the mid-year discounting to our calculation of enterprise value. Remember the calculation of enterprise value is to use the MPV function so that we can have a present value of all of these future cash flow. So how do we incorporate mid-year discounting? This is actually pretty straightforward and simple if you can think about the math going on here. Now, um, we're thinking that instead of discounting the, or assuming pre future cash flow occurs at the end of the year, which means that we will raise one plus the discount rate to the power of one, one represents the year, the whole year, then we'll uh, discount the free cash flow in the middle of the way, so which is 0.1. So half of one is 0.5. We'll discount the free ca cash flows in the middle of the year, which will be 0.5 because half of one is 0.5. So this is basically assuming that this free cash flow in year one occurs in the middle of the year. So it's, um, a, more, it's a better assumption here because um, if you, know, you generate free cash flow gradually throughout the year, then um, you, uh, you want to discount the first half of the year's free cash flows at a lower frequency and, gen and discount the other second half of the free cash flow with higher frequency, then it's essentially assuming that um, it's generating in the middle of the year. So the middle of the year is 0.5 and the middle of next year is 1.5. So it's the midpoint between one and two, so it's 1.5. And the middle of the fifth year is four between, it's, it's between four and five, so it's 4.5. So that will be the complete, so this part will be the complete formula for calculating enterprise value by applying mid-year discounting. Well, how do we make it um, uh, more easy to be implemented? So in Excel, um, MPV works in a way that it, its default is discounting at the end of the year. So we can do a simple mathematical transformation here to make it um, easy to implement. Now, um, a 0.5 and 1.5 and 4.5 here, is essentially equals to one subtracting 0.5 equals to 0.5. Two subtracting 0.5 equals to 1.5. Five subtracting 0.5 equals to 4.5. So I can put one here, two here, all the way to five and times one plus whack raise it to the power of 0.5. If you move this inside of this big parenthesis, it's essentially you uh, applying one minus 0.5 here, two minus 0.5 here, five minus 0.5 here, five minus 0.5 here. So it will be equivalent to the upper part here. So therefore we can use our previous formula for calculating MPV, but just adding one plus whack raised it to the power of 0.5. So let me do this in Excel. So I'll be doing the MPV calculation here and the rates should be the whack value is C here all the way to the last year and times one plus the WAG raise it to the power of 0.5. Right, so that will be the adjustment for meet your discounting. If we do not adjust it, let's see what's the value. WAG.
Okay, so um, apply mid-year discounting, we have roughly 1300. If we do not apply mid-year discounting, our value is 1200, which is lower because if everything incurred at the end of the year, that future value will be more heavily discounted because it's further away from now. So it will be further away, further discounting uh, because of that time distance. So now we're shifting half a year forward. So, uh, or half, now we are shifting half a year backward. So the present value will therefore push up a little bit. So buying at the firm now will cost the investors 1,108, but they will be able to, use, uh, to receive dividend in the future. So the dividend will be here. So here, a dividend in the income statement is an expense, so it's negative. But for investor, it will be an income. So it's positive, so we put a minus sign, drag it all the way to year five. And let's say we sell the company at year five. So it will be equals to the um, terminal value in year five plus everything left in year five. So it's the cash, and they also need to pay off the debt. So subtracting the debt, enter. Equity cash will be there for the sum. The rate of return is IRR 